Okay, so I'm gonna to try to keep this short but cover a lot of information. So let's talk about home prices, which have has everybody's attention. In the last two years, we've homes have appreciated at about 25%. That's gonna vary from area, price range, location, those kinds of things. But nationwide, the average was 17% appreciation in 2021. That is the largest um, appreciation percentage in a single year that we've ever experienced. But keep in mind that we, most homeowners were in a negative equity position from 06 to 2011, where uh, most homeowners lost about 37% in value uh, if you add all those years up. So we lost a lot of ground, then we made up ground. This is said to be like a sustainable appreciation rate, 4 to 6%, which we were clicking right along. And then in 2020, we had 9% appreciation. 2021 is when it got really crazy, 17% um, appreciation. And in 2022, they are predicting a 9% appreciation rate. And in Metro Atlanta, through the end of May, we were on pace for 7% um, appreciation. So um, look at the cause and effect, right? The cause was in 08 was a super high supply of inventory and a very, very low demand. And so the effect of that was sellers had to compete on price. Um, if they weren't the best value, it was unlikely that that particular home was going to sell. It was going to sit on the market. Compared to our market now, we have very, very low supply and very, very high demand. So what happened in 2007, 2008, when prices started to decline, had everything to do with supply and demand, which is in stark contrast to our current situation. So let's talk about the number of homes that sell each year. So 2021 was the second highest of record. The first highest year was 2005, where 6.2 million homes sold. Um, and we only had one other year that hit 6 million. But 2021 was not only the highest appreciation, but the highest number of home sales. Um, I think that had a lot to do with COVID, right? People realized that they needed a home office or they needed to be in a different location or they no longer needed to be five minutes from the office. So more people were purchasing homes. Um, but let's talk about the cause, population growth effect is going to increase demand. So in 2005, when the highest number of homes sold in one year, the U.S. population was, let's round up and call it 295 million people. Compared to the end of 2021, uh, where the U.S. population had grown significantly, again, let's round up, 335 million in the U.S. population, and we sold fewer homes in that year. So it's just growing population and shortage of inventory. I'm going to talk about um, new home starts in a minute, which is a big contributing factor to our current situation. Um, but first, let's talk about overall inventory. So at the end of last year in December, nationwide um, month supply of inventory was 2.3 months. Six months supply of inventory is said to be a balanced market. So when you have six months supply of inventory, it's not really a seller's market. It's not really a buyer's market. It's a very neutral market. Um, in some areas of the country and in some price ranges, this month's supply of inventory was actually less than one month's supply. But this is just a national number. Compare that to 2008 when inventory supplies were at an all-time high, 10 months supply of inventory, there was plenty of inventory on the market and again, a low demand, not enough buyers uh, to balance out the number of homes that were for sale. So when there's more sellers than buyers, it's going to drive prices down. Again, that is not what we are experiencing right now. We have more buyers than we have homes for sale. So you conclude from that what you will. Uh, new home starts. So the yellow line is the long-term average for uh, permits that are pulled for new construction, new builds. And you can see in 2008, uh, many, many builders went bankrupt, or if they didn't go bankrupt, they stopped building because nobody was buying their product. So we had four to five million homes over this 10-year span that were never built. They just don't exist. Um, but again, population kept growing, kept having babies. We kept adding to the population. So uh, it would take a very, very long time to make up that lost ground, all those homes that never got built. And that is 
partly what we are experiencing uh, with the shortage today. And when you add supply chain issues to the mix, new construction is not going to help quickly with this problem because what used to take six months to build is now taking a year to build and the build time is just that much longer. So again, cause and effect. New build slowed or stopped altogether and the effect was a lot of people lost their ability to make a living. A lot of con you know, trade, skilled trade workers, whether it was plumbers or HVAC or contractors, um, they lost their ability to, to make their livelihood and that had a, a, an impact on their ability to pay their mortgage and keep their homes. Uh, stark contrast to today's environment, skilled trade workers are in ultra high demand. Um, they're doing really well. If you've tried to have any work done at your house, you've probably, you know, been shocked at how long you have to wait before they can get to you because they are staying busy and they are they are being paid well. I hear a lot of talk about foreclosures. I'm going to wait until foreclosures hit. Uh, you can see that foreclosures have made up less than 1% of all closed sales going back since 2018. So for about five years now, I rarely, rarely, rarely come across a bank-owned property. In comparison to 2008, when 20 seven percent let's call it one in every three sales was a bank owned property or a foreclosure and 13 percent of every sale was a short sale so 40 percent of the market almost 50, you know almost half and half was distressed sales in 2008 versus non-distressed sales so home values uh, declined. Sellers had less equity back in 2008. There were a lot of folks that did 100% financing. They took out large home equity lines um, and they basically over leveraged the equity in their homes. So that's how people ended up being upside down and their home was no longer worth what they owed on it. Um, in comparison, Nowadays, we've had so much appreciation over the last two years, 20, 26% in just two years' time. So somebody who bought their home in 2019 um, has had some very healthy appreciation. And therefore, if they needed to, if their financial situation changed, they would have the ability to sell versus short closing or just letting it go back to the bank. Mortgage rates have been getting a lot of attention. This green line is the historical average over the last 30 years, which you can see is right at about 6%. Um, we've had it really, really good for a really long time. Uh, nobody thought that it was ever going to get into the twos. It did. Um, and, you know, we, we got a little spoiled. We got very comfortable with that. So this is a time of reacclimating. Um, but just to give some perspective, I mean, in the late 70s, early 80s, interest rates were 16% and people still bought and sold homes. What that has the biggest impact on is overall affordability. This graph is just showing of a household income, how much of their income is going towards housing. Um, and again, it's been really good. It's been very low since 2010. Um, about 16% of a household income is, goes towards their mortgage. Versus, again, in the early 80s, it was 36% of the household income is what it took to pay the mortgage. So uh, this is going to rise some with the increased interest rates, um, but it's still, big picture, very, very affordable to own a home. Compare that to rental prices that have also increased 20% in the last couple of years. Um, you just have to, to weigh that. Does it make sense to rent? Uh, when home affordability is still so low.